finally, a movie that combines the romanticism of John Carpenter's Starman with the eternal bleeding of humanoids from the deep. At least that's what I'm guessing the film is like. Judging from the poster, it's about a monster that steals a pouty kid's chocolate milk. <laughs> Wait a minute. Some extraterrestrials aren't friendly? He makes a good point. Some of them are just fucking whores. Extro is a 1983 alien horror film meant to capitalize on the good-naturedness of E.T. the extraterrestrial. Some aliens want your Reese's Pieces, other aliens think that you're just as delicious as Reese's Pieces. I'll stick with real Fuck You E.T. movies, thank you very much, like John Carpenter's The Thing. Well, maybe years later, this movie will have a shitty prequel. Oh, hey, it's back when the New Line Cinema logo looked like a heart attack. Amalgamated Film Enterprises present Holes in a Black Piece of Paper. Well, hey, there's my Xbox, floating around in orbit. The movie stars Miriam Diabo years before it took people a second to realize if it was Miriam or Olivia Diabo on screen. What? Screenplay by THE Robert Smith? We'll know by the way the alien keeps his hair teased. Damn kids, always tying a tablecloth to a horse in the middle of the night. This is young Tony and his dad, Sam, playing while on vacation. Go on, Come on, Come on, Come on. Wow! Well, that's a good way to confuse the shit out of your dog. And what if that light didn't show up? Did you expect the dog to climb a ladder and get that stick off the roof? This is sort of like that scene from 2001, where the bone turns into space technology. Only replace the bone with a stick, and Stanley Kubrick with the guy who did Extro. Superman could jump in to save him, but Kevin Costner told him not to for some stupid reason. After his dad gets abducted by aliens, the kid still has nightmares about it three years later, possibly caused by Sergeant Kabuki Man on his wall. Hello there, son. I'll be your British Ruth Roman for the evening. He'll come back. He still loves us. Of course he loves us. Go to sleep. <laughs> the kid's just dying to have Ebenezer Scrooge send him down to the market for a goose. I don't understand this nightmare. I thought he got over all that. He needs a father. But you're here. He doesn't like me. The fucker who's talking? You haven't established who's in the room. For all I know, the kid doesn't like you because you're a disembodied voice. Oh, what now? Again, Trumpy? Only you can prevent forest fires. And apparently, only you can cause them, too. <laughs> Say what you will about the Cloverfield monster, but as a baby, he's adorable! After seeing something suspicious in the middle of the road, the guy gets out to give it a closer look, and it's a good thing that this is happening in this movie, because if something like this happened in Prometheus, oh boy, would you not hear the end of it from me. <laughs> Thus, Mascara was created. Getting murdered by an alien could happen to anyone, but somehow getting your foot caught in the steering wheel? Well, that's your own fault, lady, and it's kind of impressive, too. And yet... That's not the most awkward thing to happen in the movie so far. Mommy! Mommy! Tony? It's all right, sweetheart. What the hell was the point of that happening? Hey, I have an idea. How about the kid, uh, he walks in the room and wakes him up out of a sound sleep? No, no. I'll do you one better. He walks in and interrupts him doing the no-pants bone dance. Mommy, I don't believe pickles are supposed to go there. Meanwhile, in the reminder that this is a horror film, ooh, the animals are always the first to know that they're in a shitty movie. Ah, you take that back to the kitchen and tell the cook this is low-grade dog food. DOG FOOD?! I'll show you DOG FOOD! Aliens always have their priorities right. Crash land ship and find the nearest big titted blonde to torment for five minutes. Also, uh, this happens somehow. What's the matter? Call a doctor. Rice, what's he done? Little bastard, waking up with someone else's blood on your clothes. You're a constant disappointment. Daddy sent it. How did he send it? Dunno, just felt something sticky. <laughs> Now's the part where they should probably call the cops, but since it's not the kid's blood, who cares? He appears to be perfectly healthy. 
If he'd lost that much blood, he'd be too weak to tell us anything. He hasn't told us anything anyways. <laughs> God damn it, where do you keep coming from? This is the first you've appeared in this scene. Well, I think we can all agree that Tony has had a rather traumatic experience. That's right, traumatic. He bought Curse of the Cannibal Confederates instead of Toxic Avenger. That's his bad. Oh, there's another person who lives in the house. Tony simply misses his father. He doesn't need thousands of expensive psychiatrists. Only a little time and care. My god, the girl with the cello. All right, this is happening too. <laughs> I knew I was gonna interrupt watching the Octomom sex tape. But Sam the father has returned to Earth, so the kid has his dad back. What a fantastic short film with a happy ending. But it's not. It's still got about an hour left. This movie is just like K-Pax, even though it's not. I'm just banking on the fact that no one remembers K-Pax. Once he washes all the orange Julius off of himself, he can be reintroduced into society. As the new doctor, he must find out what kind of food he likes first. Hello? What? Damn, he's been gone for so long, he's completely forgotten how to drunk dial. It's okay, it's already a broken household anyway. Is he going to school? Yeah. Why is she sleeping naked? And why is she French? Something sinister happened, please. <laughs> hear you, music. I too hate it when the prizes aren't listed. Are you alright? Oh shit, the McRib is back! Say, Naked Miriam Diabo. I don't know where this movie is going, but I hope it doesn't stop. I don't know what kind of school this is that lets the kid go off with his supposedly dead father, but luckily mother catches up in time. This movie is sort of like The Incredible Melting Man, only instead of coming back as a melting man, he's returned as Robin Colcourt from Cheers. You bet I'm upset. Good to see you, Rachel. Looking well. What are you doing here? I'm back. That's it, isn't it? I knew you'd come back. They didn't believe me. Again, is it too hard to establish where a character is at in this scene? For all I know, that kid was off camera standing on top of a jungle gym made out of alligator bones. Though well, that's... Highly unlikely and kind of stupid. Dad! Say hello to Harry. <laughs> hello, Harry. Oh, that must be why the movie is bad at character placement. It's directed by a snake. Oh, good evening, Mr. Daniels. I see you're walking up the stairs again. Yes, it helps me get to my apartment. Really? That's your priority? This movie just had exposition dialogue about stairs. As you can guess, stepdad Howie Mandel wants Sam gone, but not because he's her ex-husband. It's because someone sneezed on his shoes in 1974. This is where the Nazis hid the Easter eggs from Indiana Jones, but that's not going to stop Sam. And in this kid's eyes, eating snake eggs is the equivalent of catching your dad in the act of murder. So he runs completely out of the house and is chased into a dark alley. But don't worry, Sam explains everything and makes it okay. Eating snake eggs, bad. Alien incest, good. So far, it's not very bloody. Makes me surprised it's often confused as being on the video nasties list. Then again, even if it were on the list, it wouldn't surprise me either. The people who made that list never saw the movies anyway. But now we witness the biggest horror of them all, Mrs. Doubtfire laying down on the job. Shit, I know what this means. It's all just a dream. <laughs> So, uh, we all gonna talk about what the point of that last scene was? Because Rachel's divorcing you. Joe, not now. But why not now? Everyone's here. Right. So I have a little announcement I'd like to make. Rachel and I are gonna get married. Oh, great! Thank you. I'm so happy for you. Sam! <laughs> okay, that's not because he's an alien. That's about the most human thing I've seen him do so far. By the way, what's his plan supposed to be? If you think hard about something, you can make it happen. But I couldn't stop it. I tried. Look, you'll be able to do lots of things. Don't be frightened. Use it when you need it. What for? 
Well, you'll know when the time comes. You'll need it in case you want to accidentally wipe out a space fleet while screaming yippee. And now, audience, bear witness to the amazing humming snake. <laughs> this movie has been cutting back to that escape snake for a while now. I sure hope it's leading somewhere. Nope. Now she can bury it and make sure that the kid never finds out what she did. I think this belongs to your son. Oh, God. Harry! <laughs> Bitch! Clearly your son is not responsible enough to look after animals. Well, at least he didn't murder one. And as if being brainwashed by aliens weren't enough, Sam is up to something much worse. <laughs> That's right, he's a damn huffer. I must say, this is the best twin sibling love story I've seen since moment by moment. No one has yet realized that Sam might be evil, not even when Tony's room starts doing stupid things. Don't worry, it makes just as much sense even without the music playing. If I hear another squeak out of you tonight, I'll be very angry. Do you understand? Yes, Mom. <laughs> Whatever, I'm sure it's nothing. Just a midget clown in the middle of my son's room. And now for revenge, a subtle surprise attack on the neighbor. <laughs> What? This is just like Joe Dante's Small Soldiers, if it were directed by 80s Joe Dante. Maybe if the guy took off the mask, he'd stop knocking shit over. Mission accomplished, though. He stabbed a ketchup bottle sitting under the couch. Is there any part of this movie where her hair doesn't look like Dudley Moore's Arthur after a 48-hour binge? I'll give the movie this. It does start establishing things, just completely at random. What day was this? Who's boned? Well, maybe it isn't my jacket. All your money? Surprise, motherfucker! A parrot! With the adults away, Miriam invites over her suitor. That way Tony can catch them having sex, too. You just sit there and continue making that rubber cement on your own. I hope she doesn't die. I'm just now starting to figure out whether she's the daughter or the maid. to do was to scare the living daylights out of her. <laughs> oh, let me guess, that's never happened to you before. And with this, Tony has become the luckiest child actor in film history. If you're at all weirded out or confused by the odd choice of atmosphere or editing in this film, don't worry. According to the director, that was all unintentional! Haha, <laughs> no shit! Alright, the boyfriend's gotta die, too. Whatever, I'd only believe that this was happening if it looked like a computer effect. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach you. Big or small, never look down the barrel of a tank. Hmm, my brain is telling me this all has something to do with the killer clowns from outer space. Or maybe something a little more... Charming. Manimal. Never question a sudden manimal appearance. Just accept it. Hello? Someone pinned a donkey turd on the back of my head. Meanwhile, Shakes the Half Clown is filling the fridge with raw sewage! Ho oh, ho! I love that gag! Rachel asks the landlord to check up on Tony, and also, what's up with the Stalin picture on his wall? It'll be a pleasure. Bye. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, fuck her for asking me to do my job. And all this time, they were trying to make... tumors? Just one more batch and we can ship this barrel of gruel off to the orphanage. This is all very suspenseful. Landlord goes to check on Tony, hears nothing, and then goes back downstairs. Is that you, boy? Stop missing a bear. One of you practical jokes, I suppose. Ah! 
You know, it probably would have raised less suspicion if you just let him go back to his room. Joe is starting to put together the mystery that Sam may have murdered people. Yeah, I don't care. Sam, while crazy, is likable. Joe... isn't. Aw, oh, crap. He forgot to write down whether he came from Studio One or Studio Two. And look at those scratches. You didn't tell me Rachel was now a demon in the sack. No! That's when you know the sex is good, when you start turning into a bridge troll. And like a typical man alien, he just leaves afterwards. You gotta love it when the son of a supervillain gets his very first turtleneck. Now maybe Joe can put himself to good use. Ah! Wow! Good thing you were here, Joe! Ooh, T-800, you arrived just in time! Oh, look, it's the Crypt Keeper and his boy-sized crap! You'll never guess what happens next. They leave. And the only one Rachel can turn to now is Dr. Jonathan Chase. Sorry, Rachel, but I believe this ending is extra cheesy. explains the tiny clowns, the life-size toy soldiers, and the alien eggs. What the fuck is an extra If that ending seemed abrupt and slightly out of character, the original ending was going to be that Rachel came back to find Sam clones. Only Robert Shea nixed that ending, so instead of the movie simply ending with her in the woods, she gets killed by Thing Splooge. Gentlemen, seriously, don't fight! <laughs> None of your endings made sense! Two sequels were later made that have fuck all to do with the original, and there's even talk of a fourth film. What's it matter? They're all in-name only sequels anyway. It's less like we're getting a fourth extra film, and more like we're just getting another random movie that has the word extra in it. Whoopee. <sighs> Is it Halloween yet? 18, 19, 20. Okay, I come. <laughs> 